From the dizzying heights of global economic dominance, China has recently faced numerous challenges that have sparked worldwide debate. When the CEO of Marathon speaks, the financial world listens. Stay tuned as we delve deep into his controversial predictions, revealing the reasons behind his claims and exploring the potential repercussions for the global economy. According to Bruce Richards, co-founder and CEO of the investment company, Marathon Asset Management is purchasing debt issued by the ailing developer China Evergrande Group. Evergrande debt was first purchased by the expert in distressed debt, and he will keep doing so at the current cheap rates, Richard said in an interview with Bloomberg Television. Even if Evergrande may kick the can by making some debt payments in the medium term, Richards predicted that the company will eventually need to restructure. He also said that Chinese bondholders, suppliers, and home buyers will receive payment before foreign investors. Richards stated during the TV discussion with Guy Johnson and Alex Steele that there are absolutely opportunities resulting from Evergrande. It is a challenge for China and its housing sector, and hence a difficulty for the entire dependent portion. Both employment opportunities and business activity are numerous in this area. The $23 billion asset, 160 employee money manager with headquarters in New York, has investments in corporate bonds and loans, structured credit, real estate, and emerging markets. The company was created in 1998 by Richards and Chief Investment Officer Lewis Hanover. Bruce was questioned regarding his opinions on inflation. When asked about how far the Fed will have to tighten monetary policy given that inflation is rising and all available evidence, he responded, bring inflation under control. He replied, the main question then is how tight financial conditions have been in 2012. How the markets perform in 2022 will decide how the economy eventually responds in terms of growth. Even so, as we all know, the Fed is extremely behind the times. No, and there are no simple options because the diet is planned. Currently, it is quite well known that the Fed is tremendously behind the curve. The rate of inflation is 7%, and America is suffering as a result, factoring in the rising prices. How have you been with inflation? Are you guys friends, or are you struggling to beat them? Bruce said, You are aware that the Fed is crossing the Rubicon at this location, and you are aware that we are aware of deja vu. Knowing that equities fell from their peak in 2018 to 20% of the maximum. As a result, the Fed increased rates and decreased the balance sheet. But when inflation occurred, it was not moving. But now inflation is underway. They reduced their balance sheet by 500 billion back in 2018 alone. In modern times, the balance sheet is two times larger, or a trillion dollars. As a result, they would need to decrease the balance sheet annually after expanding it by 1.5 trillion each year. And he added that it is a huge swing. So how far will the equity markets fall when the Fed rates are 2%? Bruce believes that equity markets are very vulnerable today. Hence, even a small piece of news could change its behavior. He also said that it is pretty safe, even if the Fed rates went 3 or 4%. However, if it goes beyond that, one should be careful. He added that this is due to the credit conditions that will be enacted. Bruce was then asked about his opinion on the credit conditions. Let's discuss those more restrictive credit requirements. He was asked, spreads are still very, very tight right now. What can we anticipate at this point just in terms of risk and equity market assets? Are there any cracks? Bruce said, it hasn't happened yet though. High grades are thriving in the high yield market. I'm talking about duration, which, contrary to large yield spreads, is the reason why it is lower on the year. Treasury bonds are also 310 basis points off and haven't had any issues this year. There is a lot of excess in the market, yet there are neither leveraged loans nor them. He said that it is visible in the case of tech companies like SPACs Venture Capital and early-stage biotech companies. However, the excess is not in the case of credit. Hence. Strong earnings from credit can be expected. Additionally, he believes the conditions forward are going to be much tougher. However, as the Fed rates are at pretty good levels, there is no panic so far. Another problem he identified is that it is the people who are creating anxiety in the market. 
People might create panic by asking if this is the supply chain or if there is high demand. However, they are true, and it is the Fed who is printing the money. Additionally, he said that the supply of money has gone from $7 trillion in M2 to $21 trillion in January 2022. And this money is the price to pay for credibility, he added. So, have you encountered a situation where you are forced to make a financial decision due to a kind of panic news from the public? If so, then do share them in the comments. Bruce said that it is we consumers who are going to suffer from excess policies regarding money. He also said that his analyst team is now studying doors and windows. And why are there more of them on the exterior than on the interior? He said a vinyl piece of door costs around $150 to $250, which is a 60% increase post-COVID. He added that this price rise is due to increased labor costs, shipping charges, and so on. Now Bruce was asked about a possible recession. He said that as the Fed rate hikes four times, there are chances for one after two years, hence anticipates one in the mid of 2024. However, he said that the Fed rate hikes are good as they have to tighten the financial conditions to bring inflation down. What do you think? Do you agree with what Bruce said? Is increasing the Fed rates the only solution to bring down inflation? Moreover, he said to the public that one should take care of their savings, as inflation could vaporize them in a matter of years. We have seen people trying to grow their money. However, that growth has decreased in the past few years, Bruce added. All of them blame COVID-19 for this decrease. However, he believes that inflation is the reason. Now, Bruce was asked whether there would be more opportunities in this condition of distress. He said that credit is going to be very strong, with earnings ranging between 8 and 10 percent. Hence, most of the companies will be in good condition, even though there will be some who cannot pass due to higher costs. Moreover, he showed us symbols where financial conditions worsen which include the treasury rates moving up, followed by wider credit spreads. Most companies will be able to overcome these credit spreads. However, when a recession hits, most of them will fall. Moreover, he added that even if we anticipate the economy to grow 6 to 7% per year, finally, it will end up being 1 to 2%. In another interview held in 2023, Bruce was asked about Manic Monday. He replied that the year has seen a lot of bankruptcies and so far, seven of them have finished. What is interesting here? All of them took place on a Monday. The credit crunch has therefore arrived. You begin with a $10 imagination in the billion company. The quiet $3.5 billion put in by equity sponsor equity into it, as it is currently toast. Moreover, he added, I've been predicting that when default rates were less than 1% when we look ahead, we would have a current default rate of 10%. I'm currently revising it, more than 12%. I received a credit crunch and am terminating it today on the basis of this. Officially, here is Manic Monday. Now, he was asked about the regional banks on behalf of the Fed tightening. Bruce said, The Fed's 500 basis point tightening and cost of funding inversion begin in addition to the Fed's ongoing tightening. Therefore, anyone who borrowed at floating interest rates, which includes many corporate borrowers for whom the rate was zero, became heavily indebted. He added, a lot of restructuring and too much debt will result, and hence it might be a great time to be a lender. But the crunch on credits is here. I'm not talking about the big four or perhaps the strongest of the super regionals when I say the banks, but about the cohort, the KBW, whose debt trades below 80. Moreover, he said, but remember to check the credit. When the price of credit trades at 60 cents on a dollar or less, banks are having difficulty obtaining credit. It's a bold statement coming from the Marathon CEO, a prediction that could reshape the global financial landscape. As the world watches China closely, the impending economic tremors might affect us all in ways we've yet to fathom. But what's the root cause and how will global powers react? We'll be delving deeper into this in our upcoming videos. If you found this insight enlightening, give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Is China headed for an economic ice age or will it bounce back stronger? And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated as we unpack the future of the global economy. Don't miss it.